Hey folks, quick tip on this MESR100 ESR equivalent series resistance meter for testing capacitors in circuit without having to lift a lead or remove it from the circuit uh, for electrolytic capacitors. Um, equivalent series resistance. Um, it uses a sine wave. I don't know really the technology behind it and how it works internally, but one thing that's a major low light of this device are these extremely short leads. And if you don't know anything about it, you might be thinking, well, Roy, just buy longer leads, right? Um, no, uh, you can't really do that. Uh, it has something to do with that signal that it generates and you end up putting longer leads in there. It changes the resistance, throws it all off. So, um, and in addition to that low light, these alligator clips are kind of bulky and really you'd have to flip the board over and uh, just press the end of the alligator clip onto where it's soldered to the board. Uh, you've got no way to probe if you've got a capacitor like that one there to the left, if you see. Um, see how there's a gap there? Same with the one on the right, there's a bit of a gap so you can do it from the top side of the board. So. This is a uh, Sony Vega Trinitron A board and the um, flyback transformer neck board that I have removed. There's nothing really wrong with the set, it's just old. Um, but I know that these capacitors do have a limited lifespan and I'm gonna go through the board and any of them that are kind of high on the ESR even though they're still qualified as marginally good, I'll probably replace. So anyway, real quick, a tip here. Um, Check this out. If you look here, see the probe that I put on these? That's silver soldered and it happens to be a brass wood screw. Now my first round of that, I machined down, chucking it up in my drill with a file, uh, too skinny and they're just a little fragile. So I made them a little beefier. It would be nice if I could go skinnier if they were strong enough. And then I used silver solder. Um, this uh, Stay Bright Silver Solder. Um, you might be able to get away with normal solder, it just won't be as strong. Uh, and there's a uh, mini torch. So now I'm gonna show you testing this on this left capacitor here. This is a 470 microfarad, 16 volt. Now what that means, if you look at this chart here, and you can see 470, so 470, 16 volt, 0.18 ohms. So this is worst case scenario. So if it's less than 0.18 ohms, it's a good capacitor, really. Uh, it'll also say here in the display, and I'll show you what that display looks like and how the measurement goes on this cap. Give me one second. All right, as per the instructions, every time you use this, you need to zero it out. Now, if I'm clamping it onto leads, I would uh, zero out the zero it out by clamping the very tip of the alligator clip just like that but since I'm using these probes um, I'm going to touch the end of the probes as close to the end as I can anyway close to the end and I'm gonna press zero and there it is it's zeroed now I'm gonna come in here this is a bit tricky guys pardon uh, If it's dark because I'm covering the light. Point one three point one. Okay. And that's what I was getting. One three three. Point one three three. It needs to be less than point one eight. And it's saying good if capacitor is less than four hundred and seventy microfarads at twenty five volts. Right? But for the 16 volt one, it's 0.18 ohms, and this is 0.13 ohms. So this is a good capacitor, and visually it looks good as well. It doesn't look like it's popped or swollen or anything leaking out of the bottom. So anyway, there's the tip. The tips. Uh, hope that helps. Don't go and put longer leads on this. Please resist that. It throws it all off. Use these that are provided. Yes, it's a bit cumbersome, but this little device 
will pay for itself in short term. Thank you. Bye.